Hey, hey, we're back again, Hakun Prairie Ramblers, and we're talking about hitchhiking. And KC was about to lay a lay a hitchhiking thing story on us there. I'm gonna lay a couple of stories. Okay, go for it. Yeah. When I was in high school, me and a bunch of other kids used to get together. We used to go out hog hunting and just going out in the woods and doing crazy things. And one day we were out. Oh gosh, we must have been two or three miles back in the woods and. And I don't remember now whether we got stuck. We were in a Jeep. Oh, boy. Or the Jeep broke down or ran out of gas or exactly what happened. But we had to walk all the way out from two or three miles in the woods out to the highway, Highway 31. We come out on Highway 31, and it was drizzling, sprinkling rain, and kind of like it is today. And uh, we're walking along there, and, you know, we're, I think it was three or four of us, and we're looking disheveled and hmm. not like the group of young men that you'd want to stop and pick up. So we're going along there, put our thumbs out. People coming by, they blow the horns. They yeah. do all kind of crazy stuff, but nobody... I mean, nobody slows down or makes any even effort to slow down to stop to pick us up. So one of us had this bright idea. Well, we need to have one of us be injured. <laughs> so yeah, That always works. Two of us start mm-hmm. holding the one, the third one up. Like, you know how you mm-hmm. see the people yeah. go along on, and – one guy's walking on one leg and the others are holding him and helping him along. So we're doing that. And then the fourth guy's got the thumb mm-hmm. out for the hitchhike. This guy comes along, pulls up on the side of the road. And he said, oh, my God. He said, what happened? What happened? What's wrong? He, and we said, well, we broke down out in the woods and we walked out and nobody would pick us up. So we decided the only way we're going to get somebody to pick us up is to pretend like one of us is hurt. And he thought it was so funny. He huh. said, okay, good. Get in the car. I'll give you a ride. So he took us all the way into Arcadia, and we <clears throat> probably got some other vehicle and went back out there and got my Jeep, and we come out of the woods. And anyhow. That was pretty ingenuous, actually. It was. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I, I didn't well, come up with that idea. I admit, you're a willing I participant. remember that. But, I, yeah, I was very willing. I said, hey, nothing else is working that you got to do something. And it did. It worked. So here's my tip to you kids out there. Don't hitchhike. But if you do and you can't get a ride, mm-hmm. pretend like you're injured. <laughs> <laughs> and that might work. <clears throat> wow. Another yeah. time, right out of high school, I was working out of Bright Eye Ranch. And I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with Bright Eye Ranch, but it is huge. Yeah. Well, it's in the words huge, of Carolina. Billy Facillo, it's huge. Yeah. I mean, it, it's like six miles deep by 12 miles wide. and It's a whopper. So this one particular Friday afternoon, myself and Hooker Brownie. And a hooker? Oh, wait. Uh, no, Brownie. not a hooker. Oh, okay. Hooker Brownie. We're out there. And we had to be four miles out in the woods or more. Oh, yeah. And we were in a big truck, and we had it loaded down with these um, cattle feed that we're going out here, and we're putting in the cattle feeders and all, you know. And yeah. Something happened, and it just quit on us, the mm. vehicle. Well, that was way before the day of cell phones. Heard that. Two-way radios. You know, the best communication you have was hollering or waving if somebody could see you. <laughs> we were Build where nobody fire. could hear us. Nobody could see us. So we walked at least a good four miles out to the highway. And by the time we got to the highway, it's another one of those inclement weather days. Of course. It was pouring rain. Mm. So we're walking, and this car's coming by, coming by. Then all of a sudden, this car comes to a stop. Uh oh. So we go up there to the car, and it's a carload of beautiful women. Young women. They rolled out the window and said, What's wrong? And I said, Well, we were broke down out in the woods, and we tried to uh, get somebody to give us a ride. Nobody gave us a ride. I said, Oh, gosh, we really want to 
help you, but but something tells us we shouldn't. As I promise you, we're harmless. We're not going to do anything. Sure. We just need to ride out. And they said, uh, nope. <laughs> they drove off. What? That's could, the truth. You could have said, well, let's get in the truck. <laughs> yeah. So they drove off. Well, and then a, a car come along that it was some people from Arcadia we knew. That's good. And it was, uh, and but we're soaking wet and their car's full. And it was, uh, uh Well, it was like. uh, Ronnie Mercer and Dennis Mercer's father's name? Oh, uh, Francis. Uh, Francis. Francis. Francis and his wife. Francis Mercer and his wife. Yeah. And their car was full of people. And they drove along and came along. and He's and, a mechanic. <laughs> and they stopped. Well, yeah, but we're full of the booty. And that car ain't going to get out where we were at. Uh, so anyhow, we're not going to get in the car with him. Cause we're soaking wet and his car's full of people. He probably insisted. And uh, no, well, really? there's no way. I mean, we, I mean, virtually there must have been six we're people in there. Right car. on the hood, but you got to uh, hang on. And uh, so, if you would drive up to Bright Our headquarters, yeah. and if there's anybody there, stop and tell them that we're out here on the side of the road, broke down. Wow! And for somebody to come get us, he said, "Okay." And he did. He drove up to Bright Our headquarters. And there was this one, I don't know what to call him, but he was a... a ranch hand? No, he was a... A flunky. Uh, a gopher. Do boy or gopher or yeah. handyman or something. But uh, they told valet. him where we were broke down at, and it, we'd ask for somebody to come get us. And that hammer knocker Uh-oh. drove on to town. Not them. I mean, they expectedly, they drove to town. But yeah. this guy didn't come get us. Seriously, he you know, drove on to town. So I had to hurt him. The next day, I told him, I said, if you ever, mm. ever pull a trick like that again, or I ever have another reason to, I'm going to stomp you to with an inch of your life. That's what I'm talking about. I said, I'm going to make you wish you to come back and help us out. I that heard day. that. But we ended up, I think a total walk was, we probably walked seven or eight miles. And, you know, I know people do that for health nowadays, but. Back then, I mean, we'd worked a full day, and it was raining and miserable, and, work boots and, and we were tired, and it was Friday night, and our hair was getting curly, and <laughs> we were ready to go. We were ready to go that. to town, you know, <laughs> and we were ready to get our our Friday night on. And, Have mercy. And I don't think that Friday night I ended up doing anything. Was I you was still so in school? Tired. No, yeah. I was out of high school then, but uh, gosh, that was a... Uh, that was a rough time, but I've I've hitchhiked other times, but it's because we got broke down. I'm, I've never just hitchhiked. I've never just went out on the side of the road and side of the road, hitchhike and go some places. But I have picked up hitchhikers back years ago. I've done a couple that don't have any. Uh, I don't. Experience. I don't think I would do it nowadays, no matter who no, they were. No, many serial killers out there with butcher knives in their backpack oh, waiting yeah, to get you, just waiting on some prey to come along. My father was in the service, uh, World War II. He went in 43, and uh, you're at the mercy of the, the, the service. You can't you can't take your car with you. And so when they, he'd be across the country, California somewhere in the Coast Guard, and he'd get some leave time. The only way he'd get home would be hitchhike. Hmm. So he would just start going across the country. And he said, but back then, you could get on a uniform or whatever. Yeah. People would, would 99% of the time stop and pick you up. <laughs> and he always offered to, to drive for them. And he loved doing. He came all the way to Nocatee like that a number of times, and had to hitchhike all the way back from California. From California. Said, wow, that's crazy. That is. Yeah. I bet you he had some stories. I know. Tell. I wish I'd ask him about all them, but I guarantee he put a lot of miles on himself. But oh goodness, We're, segment three is gone already. Hmm. We are. We've hitchhiked all yeah. the way across the galaxy. Goodness, <laughs> you ate that one up, can you see? <laughs> it's gone, long gone. So we have to come back with an if bomb here in the short. So. Got just a few seconds in our shorts. That, so in our shorts. That's right. We gotta get Luke some shorts. I got on shorts, but the, they're under, oh, under they're under these. Under shorts. Oh, oh we better not talk about that. We'll Here be back. Here he comes to save the day.